As recently as the 18th century, 25% of all unmarried females in Britain's capital city were prostitutes. The average age of a London whore was 16, and many brothels prided themselves on offering only girls under the age of 14. In the 1790s, a respectable gentleman, a solid citizen, could walk past an 11-year-old prostitute on a London street without feeling a twinge of disgust or outrage. He accepted her as merely a feature of the landscape, like an ugly hill or a misshapen tree when you're strolling in the country. The man who helped destroy that cruel casual assumption was William Wilberforce, a backbench member of Parliament, a rather greater distinction than most of those in the present House of Commons, as Wilberforce wrote in 1787, God Almighty has set before me two great objects, the suppression of the slave trade and the reformation of manners. We know about the first of those great objects. Wilberforce did more than any other single human being to help eradicate slavery from most of the world. But the latter goal was perhaps even tougher. Nevertheless, he did it. A century later, there were still child prostitutes, but there were also charities and improvement societies and orphanages and the Victorian concept of a social conscience. Are English cities now returning to the state of London a quarter millennium back? A society that accepts the abuse, the exploitation and the degradation of its most vulnerable girls? A new report from the Independent Inquiry on Child Sexual Abuse says yes. And if you're thinking, oh yeah, Rotherham, Rochdale, Telford, well no, this report chose to focus not on any of the criminal cases you may have heard about, but a random sampling of places where if there is grooming gang activity, you haven't heard about it. From Tower Hamlets in the East End to Warwickshire, Shakespeare's County, Leafy very leafy. Uh, their conclusion, quote, children are sexually exploited by networks. Uh, that's grooming gangs, a term that is unsatisfactory and ultimately euphemistic. Uh, accepted in all parts of England and Wales in the most degrading and destructive ways, unquote. And the failures of South Yorkshire police and social workers in Rotherham a decade or more back uh, remain the failures of almost all other constabularies and government bureaucracies today. In particular, the need to blame the victims, uh, which we've talked about before on this show. You're a 13-year-old girl in foster care, shanghaied in a cab, to go and have sex with a dozen men who then urinate on you, douse you in petrol and dance around you with lighted matches. And the authorities describe you as, quote, promiscuous and putting yourself at risk and placing yourself in situations of vulnerability. So there's a lot of victim blaming from the authorities in Warwickshire, in Tower Hamlets, in Bristol, Merseyside, South Wales. And there's a remarkable lack of curiosity about the perpetrators, so that despite instruction from Priti Patel and the Home Office, the police still don't bother recording uh, the particular characteristics of the gang members. Uh, from the criminal prosecutions, they would appear to be significantly, quote, Asian in the preferred uh, and faintly ludicrous euphemism of Fleet Street. If you read out the names of, say, those convicted in Huddersfield, Zahid Hassan, Mohammed Kama, Mohammed Rizwan Aslam, they might appear to have certain things in common. A lot of Mohammeds and Ahmeds among the perpetrators. But as this report is at pains to point out, this all might be totally unrepresentative and very unfair. And all the rest are called Nigel and Jeremy and Peregrine and Tarquin. Because Britain's useless coppers are keeping all the most basic details to themselves, so we don't know. What we do know is that there isn't a lot to be said for any society that, as in Wilberforce's day, accepts the sex slavery of large numbers of its daughters as merely a fact of life. What we know happened in Rotherham, Rochdale and elsewhere is shameful. When a society declines to be ashamed, that is far worse and very telling. Uh, I first met 
the victims of Rotherham six years ago now. And there isn't a thing in this 193-page report that I didn't hear from those girls back then, including the fact that it's still going on.